It's Blues America time. Blues America time. The blues is a feeling. The blues is life. The blues is stories and legend. The blues is the heart and soul of America. It is our history and national standard. Everything started from the blues. It's time now for Blues for America. Blues America. Broadcasting coast to coast. Let's talk about the blues, shall we? Are we on? Yes, yes, let's talk about the blues. If you can hear the big voice, that means 50,000 watts are slamming through our transmitter and spreading sweet blues out of the Sonoran Desert and into your radio or streaming audio device. This is your source for Blues Talk, a tiny radio show from Arizona, Blues America. I'm responsible for this mess, your Jelly Roll King and humble host, Drew Verbis. So what is the blues? It's a feeling, of course. It's also America's first popular music and part of our national heritage that is alive today. If you need to know more, visit our website, the Digital Juke Joint at bluesamerica.com to view program info, playsets, the photo of the day, and a two-hour streaming audio of today's broadcast. While there, buy a t-shirt and like us on Facebook. Coming up on today's program, I speak with special guest Dave Riley, solo artist, guitarist, and country bluesman. And if you like what you hear today, Chicago blues legend Willie Buck will be featured on next week's program. The Blues News is next. You're listening to Blues America. I'm that guy, Drew Verbis. Following a funeral ceremony in Las Vegas, B.B. King's remains were flown to Memphis on Wednesday for a special ceremony honoring the place where the blues icon earned his name, Bill Street Blues Boy. A funeral procession then drove King's remains to his final resting place in Mississippi, where a public viewing was held yesterday at the B.B. King Museum. Meanwhile, the King daughters have continued to make public allegations which dispute King's death as natural, citing elder abuse and poisoning by King's manager and caretakers. Nevada officials stated that they would conduct a homicide investigation to which King's lawyer, Brent Bryson, claims is baseless. Blues fans will remember that Robert Johnson famously died of poisoning. In New Orleans, thousands mourned and celebrated Travis Trumpet Black Hill at the Carver Theater, just a block and a half from Orleans Avenue Family Bar, whose sign proudly bears his name. Hill, a grandson of R&B icon Jesse Hill and cousin Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews, died suddenly on May 4th while on tour in Japan. Straight from the pages of blues history, there's flooding down in Texas. Widespread flooding caused by heavy rains in Texas and Oklahoma have left 17 dead and 40 missing. Texas Governor Greg Abbott said in an afternoon press conference that the disaster declarations in the state stretch from literally the Red River to the Rio Grande. Southern soul singer Mel Waiters has died after losing his battle with cancer. He was known for R&B blues with songs like Hole in the Wall and The Smaller the Club. His booking agent confirmed his death on Thursday. He was 58. That's your blues news. Dave Riley's coming up next. Blues America. 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 Now that's some home cooking. Dave Riley is a Mississippi-grown bluesman that channels his roots with down-home guitar and soul wrench, gritty vocals and hollers. Riley developed a long working relationship with blues legends Frank Frost and Sam Carr. He released several solo albums including Whiskey, Money and Women, which featured drumming legend Sam Carr. Later, Riley teamed with professional heart master Bob Kortor for three critically acclaimed major record releases which received numerous award nominations and topped the blues charts. Dave's life story reads like the perfect resume for a blues man. He survived a stroke. He's worked as a prison guard. He served in Vietnam. 
He suffered a broken neck, and he grew up in Mississippi blues country in the shadow of Pop Staples and Bobby Rush. I welcome the main man, the main blues man, Dave Riley, to Blues America. Welcome to Blues America. We're listening here to Down South, some heavy down-home blues. Let me let me ask you, where did all this start for you? In Mississippi, man. I, I was I was born in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, but I spent a lot of time on my mom's family's farm in Oakville, Mississippi. And I and I learned all about sharecropping. I learned all about doing without electricity and gas and running water. I learned how to, how to, how to work for what you need and like working. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me ask you, Dave, how how long you been playing blues? Well, I've been playing blues now for about 20 years, but I've been playing guitar since I was nine years old. You know, I started out playing gospel, southern gospel, you know. Who taught you how to pick up that guitar and do that? Well, it was an old man named Gene Brooks. Uh, nobody knew who he was. He was, uh, he was a loner. And then Pop Staper gave me a few. My father knew Pop Staper too. My dad was a minister man. So he knew almost all the important people in in Mississippi in our area. So Pop he sit with me for a little while and they learned me the basic fundamentals and I took it from there. I got nothing against Mississippi. Oh, I'll show the home on the wide. That's real cool. So, for some people, they don't even they never been to Mississippi. So, let's break it down. Were you in the north or the south, south southern part? South the hills, what we call the hills. That's just before you get to the Louisiana line, man. Gotcha. We was like eighty five miles from New Orleans. Did you get your first guitar from the church? No, no, no. The, the first one I, I took. Like a, 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 some wire from a, a broom that used to make. And I got a piece of wood, you know what I mean, off a tree. It was almost like a bow and arrow, you know what I mean? And then I put the two strings on it and I started just doing, you know, you know what I mean? Something like to slide. But it was like, you know, it was like I, was, I didn't use the slide, I just used my hand, you know. Didn't they call those uh, Bo Diddleys or something, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but, but it was like, it was cool because I got pretty good with the one and two screens and stuff, man. And then, then they told me, say, they, they told my grandfather, I said, Archie, and said, let boy go in the cotton field every day. You ought, to, you ought to let him practice on that thing and come up there to the barbershop on Saturday mornings and let him play for the people. 
Well, I've been thinking every night how everybody seem to pass me by. I don't know. I think I'm so doggone cool. But if everybody get in sync, y'all, they will abide by the country rule. Country rule is for fools. I live and bide by the things I use. Don't go against, go against the country rule. So, Dave, where did you guys play in those days? Did you have juke joints? We had one juke joint. We, 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 we was in a dry county, so we had one juke joint, that, but, but you couldn't, you know, it, it, everybody just way back off in the woods, and the kids weren't allowed down there at all. I, I never got a chance to go down there. Yeah. So in the dry counties, people would make their own boots. bootleggers. Bootleggers. You remember that? Bootleggers, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, I mean? bootleggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we had some old boys, man. Maybe them what color they was. They knew how to make that corn whiskey, boy. Mm-hmm. They knew how to make it back. I don't know about now. I ain't had a drink since 1985, man. But mm-hmm. sh- they knew how to make it, man. <laughs> We're uh, talking here about moonshine. And I'm just going to break it down a little bit because I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know you do, man. <laughs> so you get the first. And it's, a lot of times it's served in whatever they got. And a lot of times that ends up being like a, a mason jar. Mason jar, right. So you're drinking it. And the first drink or so, you're like, boy, this is this is sweet and it tastes good. This ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Okay, okay. <laughs> I know where you're going. Go ahead, man. Tell them. So... By the time you get the third one, because you were thinking the first two wasn't nothing, you start waking up in the Piju vine. Yep. <laughs> you know you're right, man. <laughs> you know, you know. Last time I got drunk off this stuff, I was I hadn't had it for a while. I was a, I was in the service, and uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran, man. My grandma passed away, so they flew me home. I went down there, and they had some. It wasn't corn whiskey; it was like some kind of a. Uh, some kind of wine, homemade wine. They, they call it TNT or something like that. It tastes just like Kool Aid, man. The first Mason jar, just like you said. I'm telling my cousin, man, man this is nothing, man. Yeah. She compared this stuff because I was drinking gin and stuff back then. Back then. Man. They put a lot of sugar in it. That's man, one but, of the- that, but that second one, I missed the funeral, man. I woke up. I woke up on the front porch of the church, man. All of my friends, all of my friends. But I'm so glad today I can stand right here and say That the Lord been good to me You're listening to Blues America with special guest Dave Riley. We're hanging out at the vinyl shop, the record high in Phoenix, talking about the blues. Right now, Dave's got his guitar and he's going to go in the alley for us. Worked all year long All I got was Deep in that Yeah I worked all year long All I got was Deep in that 